Welcome to Frequency Matters, the RF and Microwave Update Series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my co-host, Eric Heim. This is our 250th episode. We have been at this since late 2013, so it's been more than a decade. And I'd like to welcome everyone to our first edition of a, a new video segment that we're producing. It's called Frequency Matters. And uh, David Vai and I started the series back then with the goal of updating the industry on the latest technology, news, and events, and we stuck to that formula since the beginning. We didn't have any kind of intro back then, no kind of theme. Uh, so shortly after launching the series in cooperation with Matter Communications Video Group, we developed that. And I remember our first episode, we were still using the old boom microphones before we moved to the wireless ones. Back in those days, Kristen was also a co-host at times and everybody loved her presence and delivery. So they just announced this week that Murata will be acquiring Peregrine Semiconductor. Then after that, Gary LaRue was co-host for many years and had that deep radio voice that I wish I could replicate. And the challenge is basically 5G isn't defined yet, so how do you... Now Eric's been co-host for over a year, and he never messes up like I often do. Every year we do our beach episode in July and a holiday episode in December. Last year's beach episode was Jaws-themed and recorded it around the time of Shark Week, and we featured wireless tracking of animals. Our holiday episode last year was the first AI-created episode with Eric and I elfed out. Our role in enabling high-speed, low-latency data connection. And AI created the script and the images in the whole episode. Even MiniCircuit's CEO, Jen Baines, joined in on the fun for that episode, so it was a great one. Uh, several companies have held their big product releases for announcement on our show. We released a new product onto the marketplace, which actually is this product right here. And it's very it's flattering a, it's to have them do that, as we are the first to interview some of these major innovations. We now have a high demand for interviews, so we highlight those in the episodes, and that was not part of the original idea. So I'm very proud of how the show has evolved and remained relevant in the industry for over a decade. So in this episode, we're going to continue our coverage of the April amplifier and oscillators themed issue, and we're going to take a look at the app notes and products. As a reminder, the cover story is oscillators enable conversion at X-Band, and this article compares various oscillator types, including a sapphire loaded cavity oscillator that operates fundamentally at X-Band and has superior phase noise performance. Eric, what do we have for app notes uh, since we did the technical articles last time? Well, thanks, Pat. And uh, I've got to say, I've had the pleasure of watching a lot of the Frequency Matters episodes, and now I have the privilege of participating. So I've gotten to see the effort and creativity uh, that goes into this side of the screen. And you, the uh, Gusto Matter crew, and everyone that you just mentioned have done a great job of getting us to where we are. So congratulations to all involved. And uh, back on point, uh, we've got an article from Modelithics that starts with the premise that designs are getting smaller for lots of reasons, uh, but we still need to use surface mount components. And those densely packed components may interact with each other and create simulation problems. So the article takes us through a couple of examples showing the benefit of using 3D EM simulations combined with 3D models rather than just equivalent circuit models. And it's interesting to see the ability to simulate and modify your circuit values to account for the interactions caused by the circuit layout. We also have an article from Ansilica that points out that applications are going higher in frequency, and this is enabled by MIMO and phased arrays. And while thin-fed device architecture supports those higher frequencies, converters get very power-hungry. So the article proposes RF analog front ends to solve that challenge, and it takes analog designers through several recommendations to ease the transition to FinFETs. And we had one product feature, microwave and millimeter wave gain slope equalizers from Dielectric Labs, which is a Knowles Precision Devices brand. These passive devices deal with the high frequency gain roll off at the high end of the band for modules. So a good one to check out. What do we have for tech briefs, Eric? Well, we've got some interesting ones. Hyper Labs is expanding its 110 gigahertz component offerings with attenuators and a 50-ohm termination. Xtile is introducing TCXOs and higher stability OXOs for space applications, and Pendulum Instruments 
introduced a multi-channel frequency counter time interval analyzer with less than seven picosecond time resolution. And in our 250th episode, I really would like to thank one of our primary sponsors over the years, RFMW. They've been sponsoring as many as 20 episodes each year. And they're now featuring a 2,500 watt rugged LDMOS transistor with integrated temperature sensor using Amplion's advanced rugged technology and drain voltage of 75 volts the ART 2K5 TPU LDMOS RF power transistor delivers 2,500 watts of power and is suitable for a wide range of applications, including broadcast, ISM, and communications. It has a frequency range of 1 to 400 megahertz and contains an on-die thermal sensor to assist with temperature measurement. We will put a link to this information in the description. So turning to the news, I saw several news items last week related to 6G. A team led by the researchers at the University of Glasgow have developed an innovative wireless communications antenna, which combines the unique properties of metamaterials with sophisticated signal processing. The researchers showcased the development of a prototype digitally coded dynamic metasurface antenna controlled through high-speed FPGA and is the first designed and demonstrated at 60 gigahertz millimeter wave band. NTT Docomo, NTT Corporation, NEC, and Fujitsu jointly announced the development of a top-level wireless device capable of ultra-high-speed 100 gigabit per second transmissions in the 100 and 300 gigahertz bands. The four companies have been jointly conducting R&D on sub-terahertz devices since 2021, and to date, tests have jointly developed wireless devices that have achieved 100 gigabit transmission in the 100 and 300 gigahertz bands at distances up to 100 meters. And in 2022, Viavi announced support for the research at the Institute for Wireless Internet of Things and the Open 6G Cooperative Research Center at Northeastern University as part of the Viavi 6G Forward Program. And a key aspect of the research was large-scale RF propagation channel modeling based on AI and ML technologies to develop city-scale digital twin of the 6G network. In the recent release, Viavi shared milestones in the 6G and AI research based on the company's 6G forward program. So lots of 6G news. Eric, what did you see in the news? Well, uh, hot off the presses, MiniCircuits announced that it has acquired the CATV amplifier business from analog devices. And the transaction includes ADI's portfolio of 75 ohm gas and GAN amplifiers. Uh, and while we may say, well, who watches CATV anymore, cable has become synonymous with broadband, uh, and that market offers lots of RF opportunities. Also, Swigan announced a strategic partnership with and equity investment from RFHIC, and Swigan produces GAN on silicon carbide epiwafers, and RFHIC designs and manufactures GAN, RF, and microwave semiconductors, so uh, seemingly a good match. And the two companies will focus on joint R&D, and product development moving forward. And so turning to events, the 25th anniversary edition of the IEEE MTTS WhammyCon was held this week in Clearwater Beach, Florida. Along with a three-track conference on the latest in wireless and microwave innovations, there was a dinner cruise sponsored by Rodin Schwartz and a water ski show sponsored by Falcom, and they were added to celebrate the 25th anniversary milestone. Mini Circuits is a platinum sponsor of the event and headlined the exhibition of 26 industry-leading companies, and Dr. Demetrius Perales of Purdue University was a well-deserving recipient of the annual Rudolph Henning Distinguished Mentoring Award. So it was a very successful event. How about you, Eric? Well, our next online panel session will be on June 25th, and it's entitled New Innovations in Power Amplifiers, and that session will discuss new power amplifier innovations such as AI and ML optimization, high-efficiency architectures, new thermal solutions and packaging, new materials and substrates, and power combining technologies, including the latest results in high power and efficiency. Uh, so that sounds like one not to miss. And that wraps up this episode. Our sponsor is RFMW. RFMW is a technical distributor of RF and microwave products and now power management products. When you start your next design, consider their multiple product lines. And remember, as a member of the industry, a subscription to Microwave Journal is free, so please visit our site and subscribe today if you're not already a reader. 
And uh, thanks for watching episode 250. And please join us next time for another episode of Frequency Matters.